From New York City, we bring you a new Dr. Christian story called There's No Such Thing as Luck. Presented for your enjoyment by the Cheese Bro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline, and producers of Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, and other Vaseline specialties. The star of these programs, as you all know, is Gene Hersholt, famous Hollywood character actor who has created the role of Dr. Christian both on the air and on the silver screen. He has a brilliant supporting cast tonight, including beautiful Gloria Holden in the part of Molly Halsey. Bennett Kilpack as her father, Tim Halsey. Burford Hamden as Henri Martin. Eustace Wyatt as Twickham, the Martin's butler. And Rosemary DeCamp in her usual role of Judy Price, the doctor's secretary. But before the curtain rises, we want you to meet a young man of our acquaintance... Who's who's facing the happiest new year of his life because he's just landed a swell new job. And I know you're going to make good in it because you already look successful. Thank you, Mr. Baruch. That successful look, as you call it, really did play a part in my getting the job. They told me afterwards that my well-groomed appearance had a lot to do with it. I used to have dry, brittle hair that stood right up on end. And I avoided dark suits for fear dandruff would show on my collar. Then a friend tipped me off to Vaseline hair tonic. I've used it ever since. Rubbing plenty of it on my scalp before each shampoo. Then using a few drops every morning when I comb my hair. Vaseline hair tonic has made a big difference in my appearance, and that has given me just the self-confidence I needed. Most men of today are bothered by dry scalp, for the natural oils of the scalp are dried out by sun and steam heat, washed away by frequent shower baths. If your hair is dry and hard to manage, especially after a shampoo, chances are you too have a dry scalp condition that can be relieved by Vaseline hair tonic. You see... Vaseline hair tonic is different. It contains no drying ingredients. It checks dry scalp by supplementing the natural scalp oils. What's more, Vaseline hair tonic is economical. It comes in two generous sizes at 40 and 70 cents. Get Vaseline hair tonic tomorrow and see how healthy and attractive your hair can look. And now for tonight's play. The curtain rises on Dr. Christian's office, where we find Judy all alone and busy at work. Dr. Christian. Hmm? I don't like to be always reminding you, but you do have office hours every afternoon from 2.30 to 5. The sign outside the door says so. Well, what about it? Nothing, only it's now 3.30. What? What? 3.30? Mm-hmm. I don't see why I waste so much time. Uh, I could make a guess. You haven't by any chance been visiting the Halseys again, have you? Well, yes, I did drop in on well, them, Well, then but... that's where you've been wasting your time. Oh, now, Judy. Dr. Christian, you've been trying to help the Halseys ever since you came to River's End, and nobody can ever help them. In every community, there's a family who never can get along. In River's End, it's the Halseys. Halseys are shiftless, old-fashioned, good-for-nothing. Oh, for nothing. now, wait a minute. You can't say Halsey isn't a good farmer. And he is an old-fashioned idol. He has a lot of modern ideas. Some ways, he's ahead of his time. And always behind with his bills. Oh, he's had a lot of hard luck, that's all. Oh, there's no such thing as luck. Oh, well, well, wait a minute. I don't know about that. Take a year ago last August when the mill truck backed into him and knocked him down. He was laid off for two weeks. Well, isn't that hard luck? It's simply an accident. Yes, I know, but wait. Same thing happened to him twice again. Three times he was knocked out by that truck. What do you call that? <laughs> By that time, I'd call it a habit. <laughs> mm, well, there's no use trying to win an argument with you. Uh, Any mail this afternoon? Uh, yes, I'll go get it. How do you do? I wish to see Dr. Paul Christian. Well, the doctor's rather busy at present. Did you want to see him about something important? I wish to see him about myself, and I'm extremely important. Oh? My card. Thank you. I'll tell Dr. Christian you're here. Come in. Yes, Judy. There's a young man outside who's very important. He says so himself. His card. <clears throat> card? Oh. Henry Martin III. Well, oh. if he's only the third, the first must be really something. Oh, wait. Wait a moment. Hmm? Why, this must be Henri Martin. 
Of course. Ask him to come in. Mm -hmm. Will you come in, Mr. Martin? Good afternoon, Doctor. I'm Henri Martin. Perhaps you remember my father. <laughs> remember him? Why, he was one of my closest friends. Oh, but the last time I heard of you, I think they said you were in Paris. We closed our Paris office in October. I'm dividing my time between New York and Chicago. Uh, the war, you know. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, Judy, this is Henri Martin, the, uh, my secretary, Miss Price. Charmed. How do you do? Why, his father and I went to medical school together. <laughs> he would have been a great doctor, but he just... Uh... Go ahead, <laughs> say it. He threw away his career to go into a cheap, sordid, money-grubbing business. Well, he had to take over the business your grandfather established. Oh, but I'd hardly say it was sordid. No, you'd probably be too polite to say it. But the fact remains, we Martins have made our money by playing upon the colossal and universal vanity of women. Well, oh? you see, Judy, Mr. Martin's grandfather was Henri Martin, the famous, uh, uh, what do you call him? Oh, fashion designer. Oh, not really. Well, well, I have one of your hats. Then you're very stupid. What? Uh, nothing personal. All women are. On the contrary, I think the hat's quite becoming. My dear young lady, what you think has nothing to do with the matter. Women have notoriously poor taste. Perhaps you're right when you stop to think of the kind of men most of them marry. <coughs> well, sit down. Sit down, Mr. Matang. What are you doing in River's End? Just passing through? No, I came up from Chicago purposely to consult you. Oh, you're not ill? Yes. Oh, and uh, not physically. Quite all right that way. I am psychologically ill. Mentally ill. I'm... I'm... Uh, now, now, look here. I've talked to doctors before, specialists... None of them understands me. Now I've come to you. Well, that's very flattering, and Don't but... interrupt me. Listen, and try to understand. It's this business. It's killing me. Look at me. A thing that sits in a silken perfumed office, plotting petty schemes to cheat empty-headed women. I, I should be at the helm of a windjammer with the salt spray steaming my cheeks. I, I should be on a farm. Well, if you want to be a farmer, why don't you buy a farm? I have. And what happens... My friends find it out and turn it into a pleasure resort. No, no, I, I've got to get away from them. I've got to get away from everything. Mm -hmm, no. Yes, I see. I'm beginning to understand what's wrong with you. Oh. I might even be able to prescribe for you. Treatment is likely to cost a little money, but... I then... don't care how much it costs. I'll do anything you say if... The, the... Yes? Your next patient is here, Doctor. Oh, yes. Uh, just a minute, Judy. Oh, suppose you stay over this evening, Mr. Matang, and come back tomorrow. I may have the treatment worked out by then. I hope so, because I'm desperate. Uh, uh, goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Mr. Matang. Uh, and do drop in tomorrow morning, and we'll talk it over. What's the matter with him, besides inflammation of the ego? Well, Judy, he wants to be a farmer. A farmer? A man with all his money? Yes, he has everything and wants to live on a farm and... The horses have nothing and don't want to live on the farm. Huh. You know, Judy, I... I have the germ of an idea. Maybe we can give them both a break. Come in, Judy. Well, they're here. Mrs. Halsey, too? No, Mr. Halsey and Molly. Oh, well, that's fine. Send them in. Uh, Dr. Christian will see you now. Well, come in, Mr. Halsey. Come in, Molly. Well, how are you? Just fine, Dr. Christian. Uh, sit down, sit down, won't you? Well, I want to talk to you about the farm. And I was wondering if you'd, if you'd like to lease it. Why, Dr. Christian, who'd want to lease a farm like ours? Well, I have a patient who's interested. A sick man couldn't run no farm. Well, he's, um, well, he's not exactly sick physically. It's mentally. Well, Doc, I, uh, I'd sure like to get rid of the farm, but uh, I ain't hard up enough to take advantage of a crazy fellow. No, no, it's simply that he's been working too hard and wants to get a little rest. Rest? On a farm? <laughs> he's crazy, all right. Uh, how much is he willing to pay us, Dr. Christian? <laughs> well... He wants to make an unusual arrangement. You see, he has an apartment in Chicago. Now, he'll move onto the farm, and you'll m move into the apartment. And in addition, he'll pay you $200 a month for a year. 200 a month? <laughs> now I know he's crazy. 
Or else there's something mighty wrong with that apartment. No, I think you'll find the apartment very nice. It occupies the whole top floor of an apartment hotel. I believe it has uh, about 15 rooms and four bathrooms. Not only crazy, but dirty. He must be to need four bathrooms. Oh, I, I don't imagine he uses them all himself. They're for his guests. People who come to see him. Well, when I go to see anybody, I'm polite enough to take a bath before I leave home. Yes, we wouldn't want folks dropping in just to take a bath. Anyway, it'd be an awful big place to take care of. Oh, you don't need to worry about that. The hotel will take care of it for you. You <laughs> won't have to do anything. You mean nothing? Not even cooking? No. Mr. Matang will leave his chauffeur, his butler, his cook. Oh, if you like, we need in the hotel dining room. Oh, why, why that'll be wonderful. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute, dear. Uh, what time does this hotel have their victuals? I like mine right on the dot. Mm, the hotel has breakfast from 6 till noon, and lunch from noon till 5 o'clock, and dinner from 5 to midnight. Mm. <laughs> Does uh, that suit you? Well, I guess it's all right. I don't give a fellow much time to do anything else. But, Paul, we'll be living like millionaires. Yeah, that's right. I still think the fellow's crazy, or else there's a catch. Now, why would anybody fix us up in style like that and then pay us $200 a month besides? <laughs> there's something wrong somewhere. No, there isn't anything wrong at all. And in case Mr. Matank decides to leave the farm, you'll continue to live in the apartment for the rest of the year and get on your feet again. How about the $200? Oh, you'll get that, too. Well, you say so, Doc. I guess it's all right. I've always wanted to live like a millionaire. <laughs> Mr. Halsey's apartment? No, uh, this is Quicken, Mr. Halsey's butler. I'm sorry, miss, but young Mr. Halsey isn't in. Oh, uh, are you there, Mr. Twickham? Yes, miss. I'll tell him. Say, uh, uh, I've had a heck of a time getting into these clothes, but they, uh, <laughs> they look kind of classy at that, don't they? Well, if I might suggest it, sir, one doesn't wear a purple four-in-hand tie with a dinner jacket. Yeah, but I can't go to the movies without a coat. It's too cold. It's the tie I was referring to, sir. Mm. And as I understand it, it isn't the movies, but the horse show. Horse show? Well, now, why would I be going to a horse show? I want to see comedy. Nothing funny about a horse. Nevertheless, sir, Mrs. Horsey definitely instructed me that she and you were attending the horse show. Oh, for goodness sake. And that will mean evening clothes. I'll lay them out for you, sir. What? I say, sir, you'll have to wear tails. Tails? Well, now, now, wait a minute. I'll go to the horse show, but I'll be darned if I'm going to look like a horse. Oh, hello, Dad. Say, you are all dressed up. Well, now, listen, Molly. Your mother wants to go to the horse show. Can't you or Jimmy go with her? Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Dad. I have a class tonight, and I don't know where Jimmy is. No, nobody ever knows where he is. I'll lay your clothes out, sir. <laughs> Jimmy used to be a pretty good boy when we were on the farm, but, no, oh, I don't know. I'll be glad when the year's up and we can get back. Oh, Dad, think what it would be like now down on the farm. I know what it'd be like. Your mother would be cooking up a mess of corned beef and cabbage. We'd be having something that sticks to a man's ribs instead of that bird food they give you to eat down in the dining room. But we'd be poor. Yep, I guess we would. But we'd be our own boss. And we wouldn't have somebody shoving us around and telling us what to eat and what to wear and where to go. Why, well, say, here in town, you've got to put on special clothes just to meet a horse. Well, it won't last forever, Dad. Yeah, and there's something else I don't like. Dr. Christian sort of hinted that this Martin fellow would be off the farm in a week or so. It's been 11 months now, and, uh... Dr. Paul Christian. Well, well, well why, Doc? Uh... My goodness, this is style, isn't it? <laughs> How are you? How do you do, Dr. Christian? And Molly. <laughs> well, I'd hardly knew you. Yes, <laughs> sir. Uh, Molly sort of blossomed out, ain't she? <laughs> She's taking some courses down at the university, too. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what are you doing in town, Doc? Well, I've got some great news for you. Now, your Matang wants to stay on the farm. Wants to stay? Well, I didn't think he'd even last as long as this. <laughs> Neither did I. I was never so surprised in my life. The change in him and the change in the farm. Well, he's been wonderfully successful. And I brought a new agreement for you to sign for two more years. <laughs> Oh, 
Come in, Judy. Henri Martin is in the reception room. Say, is he still worrying about holes he has forgotten to sign and send back that agreement? <laughs> worrying is putting it mildly. Smoldering would be a better word. Oh, all right. Tell him to come in. Uh, oh, uh, Judy. No word yet from the Holseys, I suppose. No, they didn't even answer your wire. Oh. All right, Mr. Martin. Oh, hello, Henri. Well, has Halsey signed that agreement? No, no, but he will. Send him a wire yesterday. Papers ought to be here today or tomorrow at the latest. I'm getting pretty fed up with all this stalling. It's been almost a month since you took that agreement to Chicago. Oh, no, no, Henry, what's... <laughs> what are you worrying about? He's going to sign it all right. He's having the time of his life there in Chicago. Why wouldn't he sign? I'll tell you why. I put more than $1,000 worth of improvements in that farm. I've turned it into a going concern. Next fall's crops are going to bring in a neat little profit. And if he's trying to chisel me out... Oh, he... nonsense. Halsey isn't that kind of a man. And suppose you do lose a couple of thousand dollars. Wasn't it worth a couple of thousand dollars to find yourself? That has nothing to do with it. I don't know why I gave you all that silly talk in the first place. But I don't propose to be hoodwinked. Oh, well, nobody's going to hoodwink you. Yes, I'm perfectly certain of that. I had quite a talk with my attorney over long distance this morning. If Halsey doesn't sign the agreement, I'm going to file suit. What? You're going to file suit to... Poor old Mr. Halsey? Oh, no. I, I'm going to sue you. Me? Huh. Why? Why, Henri, I... I mean, uh... Well, why me? You agreed to get the farm for me as long as I wanted it, didn't you? You guaranteed it in front of witnesses. Even Halsey will have to testify to that. Yes, but, uh... But, Henri, I didn't think if that Halsey you... doesn't sign, I not only lose the money I put into the farm and the profits on my crops, but I'll be the laughing stock of all my friends who thought I could make a go of it. My reputation will be damaged. Yes, Dr. Christian, I shall sue you for $100,000. Now, wait a minute. It's that... no good talking to me about it. What you better do is get in touch with the Halsey. Oh, but I've tried. I've sent him letters and wires and... Dr. Christian, Molly Halsey's here. Ah, she... Uh -huh. She's here? Uh... Where? In the reception room. She came into town on the 340 train. Well, uh, tell Molly to come in. Yes, Doctor. Now, you see, Henri, there was nothing to worry about. I'm not worrying, but unless you get that agreement signed, you'll have plenty to worry about. Oh, hello, Molly. Come in. Come right in. Hello. Dad got your telegram, Dr. Christian, and sent me back to talk to you and Mr. Martin about it. Where's the agreement? You'll pardon me, but I prefer to talk to Mr. Martin personally. Not to one of the farm hands. Oh, I am, Mr. Martin. Oh, I'm sorry. And now, look, we're here to talk business. As I told your father, Molly, Mr. Martin wants to keep the farm. Well, he has a real love for the soil. He must, judging from the amount he has on his neck. <laughs> I'm not staying here to be insulted. Well, where would you like to go to be insulted? Oh, now, Molly, please. Let's discuss the agreement. We're not going to sign any agreement. We're going back to the farm next week. Hmm. A plot. I see it all now. It's a plot. Molly, after all Mr. Matheng's done for you, you can't put him off the farm. Oh, yes, we can. What's more, we're going to. And that's final. Very well. I'm calling my attorney this evening. I'm going to instruct him to... Say, where did you get that hat? I made it. So go ahead and say something nasty about it. You didn't make it. I certainly did. And I made this dress, too. I've been going to school in Chicago studying design on your money, Mr. Martin. So I'm not so stupid as you think. Goodbye, Dr. Christian. It's incredible. Positively incredible. Yeah, I know, Henry. I can't understand it myself, how Molly could act that way. Yes, I've certainly been mistaken in the horses. Oh, but can't we settle this matter out of court? I admit I owe you something, but... Mm -hmm. uh, what, what matter? What about the farm? The farm? Never mind the farm. Didn't you see her hat, her dress? Even I thought they must have come from Paris. Why, the girl's a genius. I've got to get her for our firm. I've got to hire her before someone else discovers her. Oh, but Henri, wait. Uh, we've got to settle this. It's all settled. Why are the halls is Tell them they can have the farm. I've got to catch that girl. <laughs> Yeah. 
Any mail this afternoon, Judy? Just a personal letter for me, from Molly Halsey. Oh, what's the news? Big news. He's in the New York office and loves it. And she says Mr. Martin is really very nice when you get to know him. And she says they're going to be married next spring. <laughs> well, what's so funny about that? <laughs> Molly turned out to be a very attractive girl. Oh, I wasn't laughing at that. I was just thinking about being sued for $100,000 and how I got out of it. Oh. <laughs> and yet you say there's no such thing as luck. <laughs> <laughs> The curtain rings down on tonight's Dr. Christian play. Gene Hirschholt, our star, is going to tell you about next week's play. So while we're waiting for him, I want to say a few words about the products that make these programs possible. Many doctors say that one of the main reasons why we get colds in the head is because we allow the tender lining of the nose to become dry. But you can help prevent head colds by applying Vaseline jelly to the nostrils regularly. You see... Vaseline jelly melts at body temperature, lubricates the dried-out membranes, and so helps to keep infection out. Try this treatment regularly during the winter and see for yourself if Vaseline jelly isn't as much assistance in preventing a cold as it is in relieving the discomfort of one. People know they can always depend on the safety and purity of Vaseline jelly, not only for the treatment of head colds, but for all minor skin ailments, such as cuts and scratches, Scalds and burns, chafing and chapping. Vaseline jelly has three important actions on your skin. First, it softens and lubricates by supplementing the natural skin oils. Second, it forms a protective film over injured or irritated areas that helps to keep infection out. Third, it soothes and promotes healing. And almost the best thing about Vaseline jelly is its low price. As a generous jar or tube costs only 10 cents at any drugstore. When you buy, ask your druggist also about Vaseline camphor ice, Vaseline borated jelly, Vaseline lip ice, Vaseline carbolated jelly. And always look for the trademark Vaseline. It is your guarantee of receiving the genuine article. Now Gene Hersholt is here at the microphone to tell you about next week's story. Gene Hersholt, alias Dr. Christian. Well, next week's Dr. Christian play is called Stuff of Heroes. And will come to you from the Columbia Square Playhouse in Hollywood. Mrs. Herschel and I have concluded a very lovely holiday visit in New York, and now I must hurry back to Hollywood and begin the filming of the new Dr. Christian picture. Well, in making leave of our New York friends, I want to say just this one thing. You've all heard us brag about our Western hospitality. Well, after our stay in New York, we can testify that Western hospitality has nothing on the East at all. And so we conclude that to give visitors to our towns and our homes a sincere and generous welcome is not the Western way, nor the Eastern way, but the American way. Thank you. Until next Wednesday evening, I'll say good night. <laughs> This is Andre Baruch speaking for the makers of Vaseline products. And this is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>